Hello there everybody, it's 101 here, and mm, welcome to another one of my videos. Uh, today I'm going to be demonstrating my Minecraft CPU, Redstone CPU so far. Now it's by no means complete, doesn't even have an ALU yet, so I can't do any calculations as such. But I can do some very basic programs to do with uh, moving values about, storing things into memory, and printing stuff to a screen. So, I'm going to give you a quick overview of what I have. I have a program counter here, designed by a very awesome person who goes by some name which will be appearing on the screen right now with a link to his channel please click on that to be helpful for him this over here is my program memory I program stuff into here by placing torches in the boxes you may notice that there's already some torches placed this is a program I've written it's a very simple one I'll get to that a little bit later and then over here I have my write data bus going into my 32 bytes of RAM which is in 16 different lines, so it's 16-bit machine. 16 lines, 16 bits, 32 bytes. Makes sense, really. And here are my screens, and I can print a line from memory onto those screens fairly easily. Now, a little thing you may have noticed, there are three, yes, three addressing buses right here. Why are there three? Well, there's one here for writing, that writes a location on this, uh, writes the value that's on this into a location described there when clocked and I have two read data buses which actually display their outputs down here um, yes you may notice that this is more than 16 bits this is 32 actually that's because there are actually two buses there's a, a B bus and an A bus it will be B A B A B A B A and this can be plugged very easily into uh, an adder or an ALU of some sort I've got a prototype for an adder down there and uh, this is where the ALU will go and it'll be able to feed straight back into this bus but that's not done yet that's that's a ways off yet don't worry it will it will be there it will be there maybe a week or so once I've figured out how everything works now going back going backtracking a bit to my little program that I've written over here now what it's going to do is it's going to take one of my user inputs it's going to store it into a location in memory and then it's going to print that location in memory onto the screens um, so that's just a quick demonstration piece of code here. So first I'm going to choose something I want to input. I want to input... Uh, I'll just press some buttons here. Uh, I've, pressed, I've pressed some buttons. I don't want that one. I want this one instead. So I get a number on the end one. All right, okay. So I'm going to quick wait for that to clock. Yeah, there's a little bug right now. Sometimes it'll miss, it'll miss a clock if you clock it and start it at the wrong time. But anyway, I've pressed that. Oh, it's going to go to the first line. And it's going to display that line that I've written on these switches to the memory. You can see certain lines on and off. And then it's going to display that to the screen, which is going to write it. 1337. Leet, because I'm leet and awesome. So yeah, that's the end of that program. Nice and simple. I can do it with different numbers if you want to see that. I can uh, switch them all on. And this is going to give you hexadecimal number FFFF. So, if I just fly back over here, I go clock stop. I reset back to line 0. Go back to line 0. And then I re execute the code with uh, all of these switches on. It'll do the same thing again. Yes, except they'll all be on. And then it'll display that to this screen. And it'll be clock. F, 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 F. So, yeah, that's a, a little demonstration program I've made. Now, I also have, uh, I've implemented branching of sorts. I can go to, I can make a loop. So, I'm just going to uh, go ahead and write a little program that does a loop. Right, there we go. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write a program with a loop in it, just to demonstrate how that works. Be back in just a second. Right, so I'm back. Uh, I have implemented a little program and you'll see it running right here. Now, just to demonstrate the go-to here, it's going to jump from this line back to this line. And then, bear with me, this is not quick. It'll jump here. Then, on the next clock cycle, it will jump to here. And then it will jump to here. And then get back to the go-to line on the next clock and it'll jump back here so that works and what's this program actually doing well here's what it's doing 
saying, hang on a minute, let's wait for the screen to clear, 101 is, I think you probably guessed by now, Leet. Yay. So, yeah, it's a very basic program, and it'll continue to do that over and over. It's not particularly interesting. Once I can make it add and stuff, that will be more interesting, I would assume. But, yeah, that's that's about it for my demonstration here. Um, only one problem with this. If you do a go-to to a line, which already has code on it, then I think I think the actual go to command persists for too long or something. It ends up going to that line and then after that it goes to the line described here even though that's not actually where it's supposed to be going to because it's not being told to go anywhere. Basically yes, it's a little bug. I'm gonna have to fix that at some point. And it ends up sort of just spazzing out, going to some random place in a, a random line basically so I'm not really happy with that I'll have to fix that somehow uh, I'm sure I'll figure it out at some point in the next week so yeah next time next time you see this next week I will have a fully functional ALU I'll be able to do AND or XOR and stuff all that bitwise stuff I'll be able to add subtract and all that stuff and there'll be some more demonstrations when that happens I may even write programs to do um, division and multiplication and such so yeah Peace out, guys. I'll see you in a week.